Good afternoon, everyone. It's Chrissy from Solstice ATR. You can find me on the web, on Twitter, Instagram, as well as Discord. This is my DM. We use Adaptive Algorithm for trading on weekly basis, monthly basis, um, as well as short term. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and the like and smash the like. We use this for illustration use only. We're not a broker dealer. Past performance doesn't indicate future results. Before we get started, I want to look at the historical facts that has happened in the previous years, as well as in the present day where we are in relationship from now till end of the year. Let's first break it down by taking a look at the instruments one by one. What I put here is a small cap IWM. And I have used the 200 simple moving average on this chart to show you where the 200 has touched for the first time since the prior of last year of uh, March 2020 pandemic on the 23rd. And we looked, we reversed and came back up to here. We've been range bound after the January low of this year. We've been consolidating for the last nine months in the small cap IWM. We can see, do we create a new high after retesting the 200 SMA and break out and continue, or do we fall back to the backside of that range and fall through the 200 SMA to come back where the January highs were? We got to trade what we see in front of us, no bias, and we are have to be very flexible in our thinking without being to one side. Let's take a second look at the second slide. I have put an illustration since this is the 1949 all the way to 2016. Historical facts looking back from 100 days all the way to 541 days going after a reset in the market. Do we continue from here till end of the year because we have a small little reset here. We are touching the 50 simple moving rare average on the Fortune 500 company. Does this mean we hold it or do we fall back to the 116 simple moving average or the 200 SMA? Historically, what we see here is after a drawdown, we can get a return back in a five year historical rate of return. An average one year holding 107 days, 6.2%, and as high as one year, 15% average and 29 two year holding. It, this does not mean that we can continue higher. I'm just giving a fact on a hypothetical. The market is at this point is in a short term downtrend. Does this mean next week after the change in the contract, because Friday was the last day for the U contract, we went into the Z. Does this mean do we reverse and continue higher or do we continue lower to the May, June and July low of this year this is the march as well as the january even if we get a draw down eight percent or a draw up of three percent we know where the scenario is to the upside from where we are today or do we continue to the other side let's take a look at see where the drawdowns are this is hypothetical results from taking historical from 1950 all the way to 2017 what are the drawdowns what is an average and what I did here, I took the maximum drawdown in the market from the prior chart. If you can see, we do have this one is a 3.35, which is the downside. And a three uh, from 1994, I took the 3.57 as a markup. I did not use a 6.2%. Let's go here and take a look at the second drawdown. And what I used here is hypothetical one year drawdown of 8.13. I did not use the 4.12. I used the maximum drawdown instead of an average 3.1. I used an 8.13 to show you if we take the 4,545.85 on the S&P 500 and we take the drawdown of an 8% drawdown, we have 4,176 from that point where we can, we are still above the July as well as the June, even when we're coming back down, the May would be May, watch much lower, the March as well as the January low of this year of 2021. Let's do one more chart, which I did last week. I'm going to move this out of the way. 
and I'm going to move this out. Last week, I put this no cluster formation yet in September 2021. What I use is the three instrument S&P, NASDAQ, and the Dow showing that the fan of different moving averages have not turned like when we turned in February 19th through March 23rd, where we hit the low and we cleared the 200 SMA. We are very far away on the weekly from the 200, 116, and even the 50 simple moving average on a combination of the three. And I do have the 18 simple moving averages right around the 53,656 on the weekly chart in case we do get a drawdown. This was last week's slide that I had in the PowerPoint. Let's now take a look one more time at the S&P 500. I am looking at a nine month uh, from uh, uh, beginning of this year all the way till September where we are. We have been in cluster formation since February range of the 208 all the way up to 235 area. Do we continue higher and do we reverse from the 200 simple moving average and reverse back from the breakdown of this channel that we had on the daily chart going back from March 23rd low of last year, 2020? Let's now break down one by one the instruments a little bit more technical and look at the range of a 45-day range in the S&P 500 having no biased opinion on either side. So what we're going to do, go on a daily. We go four-hour, 45-day. I'm going to keep this rainbow a little bit to show you whenever there's a trend change, usually uh, a simple moving average just as a 9 or a 5 or an 18 simple usually breaks down. My 18 are usually those uh, red and green color, and that's my 50 simple moving average. We can see on the four hour, we were in a cluster range on the, uh, on the small cap. We fell down, recovered, fell back down, but we are holding in a symmetrical triangle. As you can see in the last two days, the cluster after the Tuesday push up, I mean, this is the Wednesday push back up. Thursday was an inside day. Friday was an inside day. This is telling us something. Is the small cap holding on to the 200 SMA to either on the daily to continue high and break out of the 50? Or did we fall through that symmetrical triangle back to the other side of the charts on the IWM? Let's take a look at the RTY. This has the fibs on it. You can see that the monthly fib high and low with a measured expected move. This is a very important number for me, the 2200 to hold in order to keep us going higher. And that's the monthly we have to clear back the 61, which would be the 38, 50 and 61 in order to continue higher. And if we fall through this area, we look on the weekly Fibonacci's, which is this range here. These are the gray area to come back to the 61.8 and eventually the double extension, which is the 161 to the downside. This is similar to the monthly Feb high and low expected measured move down to the backside of the channel on a small cap. Let's now take a look at the NASDAQ and Q. We can see that the NASDAQ range expected measured move from last month, we moved higher. We retested the prior high in the last week or so, we had fallen back into the range where the prior consolidation and the breakout, we cleared those gaps that were in the charts, which are no longer valid. We can remove them. And this is the prior range that we broke out of. Does this mean that we hold this area in order to continue higher? Because on the daily chart, we can see in the four hour, we have fallen below the 200 SMA, and we had a major shift in the tech sector and I'll go over Apple and Google to show you that there is a change in the trend in those two major uh, equities, which are part of the NASDAQ 100. And let's see what we can do. So this is where the fibs are. Do we hold this major 15,192 or do we fall through it? Or do we hold the weekly Fibonacci in this range? This one, I did not change the color of it. Usually I edit the property and I go inside and I make it into a gray color. That way we know where the weekly range is in the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look at the YM. We can see is it is in a similar situation. The Dow had the last month's expected move. We are 
you know, we have to really hold the 161 extension on the weekly. We have fallen through the two major channels on the daily chart in uh, Dow Joe Industrial Life. This was a channel that we broke above and we eventually broke down. We can remove it, no longer valid. We still have that open cone going up, but we have fallen down in the last two weeks in the prior weeks range, but we lost this scenario here. This is the area where we broke out of. Does this mean this, this section here at the 34,300 area 200 hold us in order to continue higher after falling down from the prior week? This week's range on Friday, some of the Dow components such as Apple putting a little bit of weight on the Dow and Boeing. So we fell a little bit harder. We actually, I would consider this is one, two, three, four bottoms. Do we reverse back to the mean from this area or do we fall further down? So that's the Dow Joe Industrial Average. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. We can see in the S&P 500 here, um, we had the measured expected move extension to the upside. We eventually fell back down and we filled this prior gap. We were consolidating in this area because of the breakdown. Um, we're going to remove that box out of here. This is a very important area where the 50 Fibonacci is in relationship to the expected move going higher. We tested the prior 161 extension to the upside in the last week or so. We sold off. We tried to consolidate. And on Friday, we could not hold the 44. 25 area. This is a very critical area that we have to come back and clear in order to go back to the 4478 area to 85 area. That 78 to 79, 85 is very critical coming back to it. If we do not sustain and come back to the 20, uh, 44, 25, 28, and 35 to come back in the range, we are looking for the expected measured move on the weekly from high to low where the zero is expected is 23, 38, and 61 down to the other side. And that's the 50 Fibonacci on the monthly charts. Let's take a look at BTC. We'll look at gold and silver. BTC has fallen, has not been able to reco re recover that 51,000. It tried to look up. It came back to the 61.8, similar to the 38.2. Has rejected in order to consolidate. Has to hold the 200 SMA and the 61.8 to continue higher. If it does reverse and create a cup and handle, that's great. If it falls back down, watch from BTC. Let's do Ethereum, ETH. I'll go over it very fast. Slash ETH. Oops, why is it doing that? Slash ETH. Just me. Who is the person that's typing is not paying attention to the uh, symbol up there. So when we fell back down, we're creating an inverted cup and handle or your, this is the shoulder. This is the shoulder. This is the head. If this is the shoulder in order to continue back up, it has to reverse. If it falls through the 200 and the 61, we look for the weekly uh, Fib extension to the downside, which are on the chart 161 and the 50 annual Fibonacci on Ethereum. Let's now take a look at GC. This is something very critical. The dollar has spiked up this week. It had caused a reaction at the 1805, 1800 in gold, and it fell further down. Does this mean it's going to hold this area or go back to the 1723 and the 1668 where it broke out of on the daily chart uh, gold. And I will do that in the DX, but what I want to do, go to the daily to show you where it eventually broke out of. You can see this was the consolidation at the 1678. That means the 1750, 1740 has to hold. If not, we will come back to the backside of this range here before continuing higher on GC. Let's take a look at the dollar DXY. DXY, you can see here on the spike up. This week, it has caused a reaction in gold. It was consolidating, trying to make a decision, and eventually the DX broke higher. I do not have the weekly Fibonacci on it. What we can do, go back to the 45-day, four-hour, and what we can do, go in here and anchor our Fibs for the week. And this is the low of Tuesday, Monday, to the Friday high. We can see where the extension is. I go in there. I edit the property. 
and I do ex change the color to gray color. That way we know this is the weekly Fibonacci. Weeklies are usually done this way and the monthly are done in purple and the regular Fibonacci's are done in colorful color. That way we know where the weekly and monthly are. And this we usually change from weekly. We go activate and we move to know where the weekly highs and lows are on the chart on the dollar. Let's take a look at now uh, some uh, ETFs, the IEF. We'll go back to equities. This is the IEF, which is the bond market 45 days. You can see the reaction because of the dollar interest rates are if they're going to start to to cause inflation and cost the goods if the federal reserve changes their policy from now till end of the year which i do, which i doubt i think they will still keep the market elevated where it is unless things do change the ief the bond market the short term 7 to 10 year has fallen a little bit it has to hold this area in order to continue to keep interest rates lower let's take a look at xlk XLK is the electronically traded fund for the technology sector. We can see it fell down like the NASDAQ. It has lost the channel and has lost a little bit the 200 SMA on uh, for our XLV. This is the healthcare sector. You can see in the last week or so, we had a major reaction drop fast the week before. This week we are consolidating. That's where we, where we stand. We can take a look at XLF, the financial sector. You can see it's in a grind a little bit lower. XLE, that's the energy sector. Keep an eye on the energy sector in relationship to where we are. We can take a look at the RSP. And I'll do one from Schwab and one from another one. This is a similar situation. This is the exchange equal weighted. Uh, equity through an etf you can see it is holding the 200 sma does it come back to this back side of the channel in order to continue higher and let's do schwab sch we'll do the weighted one um broad market the b and we'll do one is the growth you can see in the broad market is creating an inverted cup and handle does this mean it's lose the two the 116 this channel in order to go back to the 200 sma in order to revert or do we reverse here back to the upside? We'll do one more in a Schwab, SCH, and we'll do um, the, the, the dividend equal weighted one, the D, and you can see it has fallen a little bit lower because the mid cap, small cap, ha has to do with the reaction of people's emotions and feelings. Usually we have to pay attention to them if there is any fear or not. Let's take a look at the VIX, which is the fear gauge in the ETF fund. We can see that in the la this coming week, the ETF will be changing contract to the coming one because this is of the option expiration and triple witching. You can see that we had a rounded bottom and eventually we broke up. We we're having lower highs and this Friday gave us a reaction to go back to the mean. 2070 is very critical area to hold in the VX unless it creates a cup and handle and reverts back from the mean. Let's take a look at the VX, which is the future contract. And we can see in the future contract, we had that push up. We had this professional gap up here. This is the change in the contract and option expiration and triple witching. We have this push higher. We have to keep an eye on that top 2170 to see if it holds in order to continue and break the prior 2330 to cause a reaction in the market to the downside because this looks like a rounded bottom this is the handle of it in order to continue higher or not on the vix let's take a look at aapl and this is the where we got to pay attention to be caution what we want to do go to a nine month time frame we're going to go to daily instead of a yearly We'll go six months out and we'll do OK. We can see that on the monthly Fibonacci Fib extension, we broke up. We eventually fell back down. We have to pay attention to Apple because it's got a gap right here between these two candles. We will remove the rainbow out of the way so that way it's not in our hands to see. Apply so we can see the candles a little bit more clearly. I do have this gap right here that I mentioned. 
and we do have another one further down down here which has not been revisited I would like to see what the one if things do turn south. I like to see not the 135 area or the 138. I'd like to see the 228 area, 229 for a nice reset. Then continuing higher. What I'll do, I'll zoom in in case things do change. I'm not biased to being bearish. We have broken this channel here. We lost the 18 simple moving average and we lost the 50 on Apple. Does that mean the weekly Fibonacci? Do we continue to the backside of this area and do we fill this little tiny gap in this area in order to reverse back from the mean on Apple? This is a major channel and the 200 SMA, the 116 and the Fibonacci goes from high to low on the annual chart on Apple. Let's take a look at Google. Google. We can see in Google L, this is the first time I see there was consolidation like here when it fell, broke out, consolidated, consolidated again, broke up, retested, consolidated, broke out, consolidated, broke up. Does this mean, because we've been testing the 18 simple moving average on the daily, every time we had a test, we eventually got support and broke up. On the monthly chart, we can see from here, if I zoom in, just till, till May, we can see that it's creating around the top a lower high. If this is the inverted cup, does this mean we're going to lose this weekly Fibonacci to come back to the 50 simple moving average and the consolidation of the prior channel breakout in order to continue higher or do we reverse from that area coming back up to the upside? Let's take a look at NFLX. We can see Netflix is holding OK. Tesla is holding okay. Take a look at Amazon as well. It was okay an inside day on Friday. Does this mean we are changing trend in these sectors or do we continue higher? We got to pay attention to what the market offers us. We're going to remove this fib. I'm going to go back to the ES right here. And I want to do the monkey bars for everyone on this chart. Oops, slash ES. And the reason behind the daily chart here that you can see that there is a gap in this area that I have marked up here. Remember, this is the June uh, low. This is the July. This is the August low. This is the May. This is the March low so remember we're still in an uptrend if you put these channels up and down we have not retested this channel or the open cone in this area if i zoom in you can see that there is a cone to the top and a cone to the bottom that's coming back to the back side of this channel or this one so we got to pay attention to that we're going to go in style we're going to go to standard we're going to go to monkey bars. You can see this is the measured move on the monthly Fibonacci. When we retested the high, this was the close. This is the open. This is the POC. This is the value area high and low. Are we coming back since we broke the POC on the monthly? Does this mean we retest the 4200 in order to reverse back on the monthly charts on the monkey bars? Or do we change it to a daily chart? We're going to go to uh, 20 day, one hour, so you guys can see a little bit more compression out of this consolidation. You can see we consolidated. We do have one virgin control point up here. We fell down. We are in consolidation this week. The value area was overlapping in the last four or five days since Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We fell down on Friday. The POC is lower, but the time spent was a little bit higher. Does this mean we reverse back from the mean to the upside on Monday or not? Pay attention to what the technicals offer you. Remember, this happened in the uh, uh, between uh, 4.15 and the 5 o'clock close in the market because remember they extended the hours from the 4.15 to 5 p.m. The range was a little bit more in consolidation and use, you know, might have uh, caused everybody, hey, this is the weekend, let's get rid of some of the, our inventory. We don't want to hold the old contract to you. We want to change to the Z contract for, from now till end of the year see if there's going to be continuation or not and they sold it this was where the open was this is the value area high value area low 
and this is where our POC, we are below the POC on the close. Does this mean we are we stay below and fall and continue lower, or do we reverse back to the mean where the time spent? Because if the expected move that 50 Fibonacci between here and here is the high, that means the expected move should be coming back to the midpoint of the prior value area between the highs and lows of a profile unless we fall away and continue lower in the S&P 500. If you like this video, hit the like button, smash it. And if you'd like to subscribe, it's free on weekly basis on YouTube under Chrissy Farah Solstice ATR. Take care. See you Monday.